Rates of reaction. The concentration and temperature effect. In a moment we're going to look at this reaction. Sodium thiosulfate plus hydrochloric acid reacts to form salt, sodium chloride, sulfur, sulfur dioxide and water. How do we measure the rate of a reaction? Either by the disappearance of the reagents or the appearance of the products. So which one of these stands out? These are all colorless liquids. Sulfur, sulfur dioxide. Sulfur dioxide is a gas. You might think you could monitor that easily, but in this case it dissolves so well in the water that it's unreliable. So we are going to use sulfur. Sulfur forms a precipitate. And as more and more of the precipitate forms, so it becomes murkier and the cross eventually can't be seen. There is a worksheet that goes with this prac. Let's look at the details. The first part, the concentration effect, we're going to compare how the time for the cross underneath the conical flask to not be visible as the amount of the reagent sodium thiosulfite changes. Afterwards, we will do the temperature effect, where we take 50 milliliters of the reagent, but at different temperatures. Room temperature was 19 degrees Celsius, and we try one 10 degrees hotter and 10 degrees colder. And now for the measurements. We take 50 milliliters of the reagent sodium thiosulfate in a conical flask, and place it above a cross marked on the piece of paper. Then add 10 milliliters of hydrochloric acid and start the timer. We then swirl the conical flask continuously. This takes time, so we've sped it up. Notice the solution gets murky as the sulfur precipitate forms. Looking from above, we record the time when the X is no longer visible at 1 minute and 2 seconds. We now repeat successively with less sodium th thiosulfate each time. Here, 40 millimeter, milliliters. Again, we speed it up and we notice the X is no longer visible at 1 minute in 16 seconds. We round the 15,51 up to 16 seconds. And so on until finally we are only using 10 moles of the reagent. This takes 5 minutes 43 seconds. Right, so these were the results that we see over here. We can see the times were recorded and then converted from minutes and seconds into seconds. One minute, two seconds is 62 seconds. Three minutes, one second is 181 and so on. So let's plot these on this graph. So at 50 milliliters of sodium thiosulfate, we saw the time was 62 seconds. So we look at the scale here, and just after the 50, we get 62. Plotting the others is like that. If we try and draw the best curve, it might look something like that, which suggests some sort of an inverse relationship. To see some, whether something is inversely proportional, we need to plot the amount as before, but we change the time to the inverse of the time. So let's look at these values and see how they convert to the inverse of time. 1 divided by 62 is 0, 0, 0,061. But that's difficult to write as a scale and interpret. Writing it as scientific notation, we get that, 
But if I want this to be 10 to the minus 3, and you'll see why in a moment, then I must write 16, 1. And so for the others. So we get numbers ranging from 2, 5 to 16 times 10 to the minus 3 on the scale. And we only need to write the 10 to minus 3 once. So let's plot those values. So let's start with this one first. When 10 mils of the reagent was added, we get a value for the inverse of time as 2,5 times 10 to the minus 3. Looking at the scale, it's easy to see this would have been 3 and 2,5 there. So as we add the others, they appear to line up in a straight line. And so we can then show that it's an inverse proportional relationship. So, if we're writing it as a conclusion, the time for the x to be obscured by the precipitate is inversely proportional to the concentration of the reagent sodium thiosulfate. We measure different amounts. Let's at this point notice that you have to have the same volume in each flask. So, where we added 40 mils of this, we needed to make up the volume to 50 by adding 10 mils of water and so on for these ones. Now for the questions. Looking in them one at a time, which rows are the concentration experiment? It's these first five that we plotted the graphs for. Notice that the temperature is the same for all of them and it's the concentration or volume of the sodium thiosulfate that was different. The temperature experiment, well, we're comparing the first one with the last two. Notice the volume is the same for each, but the temperature is different. Let's have a look at these values. When the temperature is 10 degrees warmer at 29 degrees, we'll see the time is roughly half. That means it's reacting at twice the speed. And when it was colder, we see the value is roughly two times longer, which is, means it's two times slower. There is a rough rule of thumb that says the reaction rate doubles for every 10 degrees rise in temperature. Let's consider boiling rice. The temperature in the pot remains 100 until all the water boils off, and then there's a sudden rise in temperature that causes the food to burn. If we use, however, a pressure cooker to cook our rice or stew or whatever it is, the temperature in here is about 120 degrees. Well, to double this, you need to get to 110 and double it again 120, according to this rule. So you're cooking things at four times the speed. It's four times faster in a pressure cooker, and thus you're saving electricity. Now to the variables, which is the dependent variable. Well, the time it took for the X to be obscured is dependent on the concentration. So the time is the dependent variable, and the independent is the concentration, which in our case was the volume or amount of sodium thiosulfate. So what are the control variables? In the concentration experiment, the temperature was constant. They were all at room temperature. The volume of the liquid in the conical flask was constant at 50. And for the values that were less than 50, we added the appropriate amount of water. And finally, the conical flask itself should be kept the same. Why? Let's look at that one more closely. The conical flask must be kept the same. The bigger one as we see over here, would be shallower, thus causing the cross to be visible for longer. So the shallower one, you can see over here, looking at from above, uh, the cross is more visible than the one that is deeper. These two, uh, there wasn't that much difference, but this one is certainly, there's a very faint X over there. Question three. Why must the water be added? Well, I've explained this one already. Here it goes again. The total volume must be the same. So we added 10 mils of acid 
to 50 mils of sodium thiosulfate in the first measurement. Subsequent ones, we added less of this and we topped it up with the amount of water to make sure that the volume was the same. Why can't we compare rows number two with rows number six? Well, we've changed both the temperature and the volume. And you can't change two variables at a time. Question five. What is being observed as a measure of the rate of the reaction? Well, we had a cross below the conical flask and it's the formation of the precipitate that gets more and more and eventually obscures the cross, making it invisible. And that's it. Thanks for joining us.